This is the fuel sump tank for the Dark Arrow 1. It's a critical piece of hardware because it's basically the backbone of the aircraft's fuel system. We recently tested it and found that it didn't perform as expected, which threw a wrench into what we'd originally planned for this video. So instead, we thought we'd do something a little different and show you behind the scenes of what it looks like when a key component doesn't perform as expected. So let's just dive in. I think the best place to start is over at the engine where we can begin to understand the aircraft's fuel system and why this sump is even needed in the first place. The fuel system is built around the UL Power 520IS, which is a six cylinder, 200 horsepower engine. In order for the engine to operate properly, it requires a continuous supply of fuel. Now, if our only objective was to get the engine to run, the easiest way to accomplish this would be to attach the engine to a tank of gas. This is actually how we set up the fuel system for the taxi testing. This arrangement works just fine for simple ground testing, but packaging fuel in a barrel shaped tank isn't exactly efficient. A better strategy is to match the shape of the tank to the contours of the aircraft. This frees up more space for passengers and baggage. But you don't want to put the fuel tank just anywhere. The fuel should be stored as close to the aircraft's center of gravity as possible. This way, as the fuel is burned, it limits the amount of change to the aircraft's center of gravity, which limits the impact of the aircraft's handling characteristics. With this in mind, one of the best fuel storage locations ends up being the wings of the aircraft, which keeps fuel near the center of gravity and leaves volume in the fuselage freed up for people and cargo. Getting fuel from the wings to the engine requires that it either be gravity fed or pump fed to the engine. High wing carbureted aircraft take advantage of gravity fed systems. With the fuel tanks positioned above the engine, gravity helps fuel flow down to the engine. However, for low wing aircraft, like the Dark Arrow 1, a pump fed system is necessary where a pump actively delivers fuel from the sump tank to the engine. The Dark Arrow 1 wing holds 76 gallons of fuel. Fuel is added to the wing tanks through fill ports at the wing tips. The wing slopes downhill towards the fuselage so fuel naturally flows towards the center of the wing. The center of the wing is the lowest point of the fuel system and it houses this one gallon fuel sump tank. The wing tanks gravity feed to the sump tank to keep the sump full at all times. Fuel is drawn from the sump tank by a fuel pump that then feeds this fuel to the engine. Fuel pump is continuously pumping way more fuel than the engine can burn, so any excess unburned fuel flows back to the sump tank. On the surface, the fuel system seems pretty straightforward. Fuel up the aircraft at the wing tips, let gravity take fuel from the wings to the sump, pump the fuel, from the sump to the engine, send any unused fuel back to the sump. However, the design of the fuel system has to go beyond this basic function of supplying fuel to the engine. Now that fuel is no longer just sitting in a single cylindrical tank, but is instead split between a left tank and a right tank, the fuel system now needs a way to draw fuel from each tank equally. And beyond this, it must also be capable of handling a range of complexities and contingencies like fuel contamination, fuel vapor, fuel level monitoring, fuel draining, unusual attitudes, and atmospheric pressure changes. Aircraft manufacturers all have their own strategies for approaching this challenge. For example, one way of preventing fuel transfer between the wing tanks is with a fuel selector valve. We decided against a fuel selector valve because we wanted to reduce pilot workload and eliminate the possibility of a pilot forgetting to switch tanks. No matter the aircraft configuration, whether it's a high wing, a low wing, certified, experimental, crop duster, or cruiser, Developing a robust fuel system is crucial to a safe and reliable design. In the Dark Era 1, most of this fuel system complexity is handled by the fuel sump tank. Given the importance of the sump tank, we've put a lot of attention both on the design side and testing side. And while we're talking about testing, I think it's important to point out that we don't just guess what will go wrong with a component or a subsystem. In engineering, we use official methods that are more systematic. We basically anticipate potential issues, assess their likely impact, and then create mitigation strategies for the most significant ones. We used a systematic approach for the fuel sump tank to identify several of these tests, including leak and vent checks, fuel valve drainage, and fuel flow rate into the sump. We also want to understand how tilting the sump at different angles and also inputting different pressures at different ends of the sump would impact fuel transfer between the left and right wing tanks. At the end of the day, we want the sump engineered so that it prevents or significantly limits fuel transfer between each wing tank. So with that in mind, we ran the sump tank through its paces to see how it performs 
perform. Let's go take a look at the test rig and the initial test results. This is the simple test rig that we set up. It looks a little wacky with the clamps and tubing, but it has all the basic elements that we need. Starting at the center of the rig, we have this stand for the fuel sump tank to sit on and pivot back and forth like a playground teeter-totter. This allows us to simulate a range of angles the aircraft might encounter during flight so that we can study the fuel transfer between tanks at those angles. To the right of the sump tank, we have this catch tank or what we're using to represent the aircraft's low wing. What's collected in the catch tank would be the fuel transferred from the other wing tank. Running into the catch tank are two lines. This would be the wing tank's feed line right here and the smaller line would be our vent line. Now since I know the dry weight of the catch tank, I can measure the fuel collected in the tank after a set amount of time to get the fuel transfer rate under any of these tilt conditions. To the left of the sump is what represents our other wing tank. With the way I have this configured, this tank is our high wing that feeds fuel into the sump under a tilt condition. I can also adjust the height of this tank up and down to represent different fuel levels in the wing. I can read those fuel levels out right here. Different fuel heights translate to different fuel pressures, which means different fuel fill rates to the sump. Less fuel in the wing means less pressure and a slower fill rate to the sump. Beyond these fuel transfer tests, we can also perform leak checks on the sump tank, test the drain valve to simulate checking for fuel contaminants, test our electronic fuel pumps, and several other edge cases. Once we had this fuel test rig set up, we could start testing the original sump tank design. And the initial round of testing went well, for the most part. Overall, the sump tank performed as expected. The sump tank's check valve significantly reduced the fuel transfer rate between the tanks. We also tested how quickly fuel transfers into the sump from the feed tank at different fuel levels by moving the feed tank up and down. At low fuel levels, the amount of fuel transfer rate was well within the acceptable limits per the FAA's Part 23 airworthiness standards for normal category aircraft. Although this initial testing on the original sump tank went well, the testing did highlight one weak point in the design. A small fuel leak was found between where the drain valve line interfaced with the sump wall. We had already identified this as a potential concern before the test. And although the leak was minor and could have likely been solved with additional sealant, we saw this as an opportunity to both correct the specific issue, but also further improve the sump at the same time. Bottom line, the sump tank just wasn't up to our standards and the testing only further confirmed that. So we got to work on a new design. When it comes to a component or subsystem redesign, we almost always start with some brainstorming in front of the whiteboard, but then quickly transition into the CAD environment to work through design refinement. Onshape is our preferred CAD tool. And although we now have a brand relationship with them, our time with them goes back well before this. Onshape made it easy to model the revised sump tank, but also every component for the Dark Arrow One. To model the revised sump tank, we started by sketching out its sides and then lofting those curves together. The drain port area was then sketched and extruded. The sump's lip was then modeled to match the profile of the existing lid. Material was removed using a shell operation and then everything was mirrored. After checking everything over, we confirmed that it matched up with the sump's existing lid. Other features like its mounting feet were then modeled. With the sump tank modeled, a male mold could now be modeled. We started by extruding its basic shape. A boolean operation removed unneeded material, leaving only the sump's internal geometry. From here, the sump's lip geometry was created, followed by a mold flange. We also modeled the mold stock material and then refined the model by rounding out its sharp corners. You can sign up for Onshape for free using the link in the description. With the mold modeling completed, we started manufacturing the mold. MDF sections were bonded together to create the mold's rough shape. MDF is not our preferred mold material, but it works well for making a few prototype composite parts. The stock was then mounted to the router table and CNC machined. The finishing operation brought the MDF to its final net shape. The small tool marks from CNC machining were then sanded out. Epoxy resin was applied to the mold to seal it. Once the epoxy cured, it was then mold released. Several layers of fiberglass were then placed down. A vacuum bag was applied to the mold to compact those fiberglass layers down to the mold surface and draw out all of the air. Epoxy resin then was infused into the fiberglass layers. The resin was allowed to cure and then the sump tank was removed from the mold. It was then trimmed and sanded to final shape. To finish it up, we bonded on the sump's mounting feet and installed all of its bulkhead fittings. This is the revised sump tank. So what changed over the original and how did we improve it? The first change was updating the material of the body from conductive carbon fiber to non-conductive fiberglass. With the number of aluminum bulkhead fittings interfacing with it, we wanted to reduce the possibility of galvanic corrosion between these materials. The shape of the sump body also changed before the sump sloped towards the center, making the center the lowest point in the fuel system. This is where the fuel drain valve line was installed and given how it interfaced with the sump's wall, it was really tricky to get a reliable seal. 
level. Another problem with sloping the bottom of the sump towards its center was that it relied on the aircraft being level when checking for fuel contamination. If the aircraft was not level, it meant that the lowest point may no longer be the center of the sump and instead one of its corners. A contaminant like water, which is more dense than fuel, would now be at the corner of the sump and would not be drained when performing fuel contamination checks. The revised design moved the low points to the outer ends of the sump. The sump is now sloped front to back, side to side, and along its vertical walls. Now the aircraft can be parked on unlevel ground, and the low point will remain where the fuel drain ports are located. Modifying the sump tank's shape to get the exact geometry needed made up a major portion of this redesign, but it was also the quickest and easiest part. A big part of this is our ability to manufacture our own molds. Being able to come up with a composite part design and manufacture a mold in-house is a powerful tool that allows us to iterate on our designs and improve upon them quickly. The nuances of designing and manufacturing high quality molds is always a top question from our aerospace composite course students. It's why we created the aerospace mold making course, which is now available online and in person. In fact, the entire step-by-step -step process we went through to CNC machine the mold for the revised fuel sump tank is covered in the course. We even included the cam files so you can create the sump mold yourself if you want. There are a ton of other mold design and manufacturing examples, so check out the aerospace mold making course by following the link in the description. In addition to changing the geometry of the sump, the drain port has been updated from one port to two ports, with each being integrated directly into the sump. In the original design, the port was located away from the sump and needed a drain port line fittings, standoffs, and a custom mounting bulkhead adapter. With the drain ports integrated into the sump, the original sump's drain port hardware could be eliminated, simplifying the design and reducing part count. Having the drain ports integrated at each end of the sump improved how the sump was mounted to the wing. Before, the sump required four mounting tabs, each with their own mounting stud standoffs and hardware. That was all reduced down to these two phenolic feet that both locate and secure the sump into position. Lastly, we integrated shuttle valves for the left and right fuel vents directly into the sump's lid. These were a more optimized solution over the previous off-the-shelf ones, which were heavy, bulky, and not well suited for this application. So with the new design all wrapped up, how did it perform? The revised fuel sump tank performed well. Removing the drain port line that interfaced with the sump tank was definitely an improvement over the original design. The two newly integrated drain ports worked as well. This check was performed with the fuel sample jar on both the left and right drain ports and everything checked out as expected with these tests. Beyond the leak and drain port checks, we also ran the tilt and fuel fill rate test. Similar to the original design, the revised design performed as expected by significantly reducing the fuel transfer or eliminating it. A new addition to this test was the integrated vent shuttle valves, which also did their job significantly reducing or eliminating fuel transfer depending on the tilt angle. We also saw acceptable fuel fill rates even at simulated low fuel levels. That wraps up the majority of the testing for the fuel sump tank. There are still a few edge cases for us to test out, but for the most part, we're pretty happy with where the design is at. From here, we'll be conducting fuel testing on the wing tanks and then permanently installing the sump into the wing and conducting one last test with the fuel system as a whole. We'll save that for another video and we'll catch you in the next one.